There's a type of diffusion materials that are referred to as shower curtains that do about the same thing this is going to do. That soften this light on him. When I say soften, I'm talking about the quality of the light. The light on everyone in this front row right now is fairly soft because it's bouncing off of everything around me. Softening your features, it's reducing detail. Like what I'm trying to do here with him, what's happening right now on you, on you, less so as people get further back. But if you're trying to flatter people a little, and most people perform better on camera when they feel like they're being flattered a little bit. As, you know, as vain as that might sound, it's just a lot easier to work on camera if you feel comfortable, if you feel like your every flaw isn't being minutely examined. I know right now I feel fairly uncomfortable. But... Stand in this light. Yeah. <laughs> but that's nothing compared to how Wes feels. But the idea with any source like this to make it soft, to make it flattering, is to fill the diffusion up with light. Most of these fixtures that I've got around the room, this diffusion material that's on them, I've filled most of the screen with light because as that source gets bigger, the softer the light gets. If I've got a 4x4 four four like this that I'm filling with light, the light comes off of it is no longer the hard light that comes through that lens, which is just this little tiny point. That lamp is igniting light from a little point as big as a pinhead. But when it hits this, that light source is now big. It's naturally soft that way. It's much more flattering that way. Does anyone have any questions for me? About any of this? That one's bad. I can't see you very well. I have a, a general question more about how you deal with fluorescence. If you're shooting inside, and I know fluorescence is generally bad, um, how do you minimize the fluorescent effect with the stuff that you've got laying around? Well, Usually my solution for commercial industrial fluorescence is to turn them off. With stuff laying around, the best thing you can do is white balance for those lights. That's the absolute best thing you can do. Rather than relying on your camera's built-in 3200 degree tungsten white balance or 5600 degree Kelvin daylight balance, I'm not sure where you are in the room. I'm way back there. Way back there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. The best thing is to do a custom white balance for that light. To take that light, put a white card in front of it, aim the camera and fill the camera's lens, fill the picture image with that white card, and tell the camera that's white. Because as far as the camera is concerned, from then on, that will be its new white point. That's how it will judge light from there on. Our eyes don't don't work like that. They're not fixed. Our eyes adjust. Our brain adjusts what we see as white light. Cameras can't do that. They can't do it continuously that way, or at least professional cameras don't. I'm not aware of any consumer-grade cameras that do that or do that well. They can continuously change color temperature, or they can deal with mixed sources the way our eyes and our brains do. So you have to pick something. If I'm trying to flatter someone with light, I'm usually going to choose to key them with something that's going to end up looking to the camera like white light. Now I may play mixed sources around them. I may come in and hit them with a little LED fixture. I may gel something and I may throw some light at them that's a different color. But that's usually as a backlight, as an edge light. I'll throw it into their fill side. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, to some degree. Like, so for example, like we shoot a lot of uh, just little short videos around the office, mm -hmm. right? So we've got a room that's got 
windows, but the natural, but they're so dark, there's really no natural light that comes through very well. Yeah. We're stuck in a room with fluorescent light and a few. We've got a couple. We've got a couple lights for key, but they're so damn harsh that they throw a real harsh shadow on the subject and then against the wall. And so we don't have anything really to fill. And then okay. if we turn off the fluorescence, it's too damn dark, and we wind up with this, you know, synchronicity video effect, right? Or, you know, police video effect. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm well, trying to figure out how do I... The best right? thing I can recommend is preparation. Is You know you're going to encounter situations, especially if you shoot a lot on location, and you're going to places you haven't had a chance to scout before you go into them. Mm -hmm. You haven't had a chance to walk around, look around, and see what your environment is like. The best thing you can do is bring some tools with you, be it a flex fill, just a regular photographic flex fill can be your best friend because that thing travels small and pops out and becomes big. And just to be able to take that and put it on a chair with a book so it doesn't slide off and just slide it in at the edge of the frame and do what I was doing with that bounce board, move it in and reduce contrast, allow people to see into that fill size so they can see what the person who's communicating the content is saying. I mean, for a lot of you, audio is probably more important, and I hate to denigrate what I do, but audio is probably more important than what I do. It's more important for you to hear what the speaker says than to see the image. Uh, there's a movie called The Blair Witch Project that, you know, the hallmark of that movie is ugly, horrid images, just some some really ugly cinematography. Nothing in that film looks good from an aesthetic standpoint. But they spent 18 months on the sound design of it. 18 months because it was that important for them to communicate that information clearly. But that's not always what everybody's trying to do. If you want to If you want to create an image that's something other than ugly, something other, because most cameras, that's what they're going to capture. If you're not controlling the light in the situation just a little bit, the image is likely to be unflattering. Uh, and that can be a distraction. If you're trying to communicate information to people, if the image is just off-putting in and of itself, you're less likely to get people to get involved with the information you're trying to present. And if, if the information is king, then anything you can do to assist it, assist the message, is probably worth doing. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, 